Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to the Town of Light as we follow the adventures of, well, presumably an older Rene, or maybe a Rene imagining things, or a family member of Rene, or I don't even know, but following the adventures of Rene somehow or other, who has been locked away in this facility, and last time, well, we started learning that sometimes truth is much, much worse than any form of terrible conspiracy, as it would appear that some of the terrible things that were done to Renee, like having her mail withheld from her, like being held in the facility even when she thought that she was fit to go, like having her partner snatched away from her, all of it might have been not quite as she perceived it. She may be indeed more mad than I originally thought. This is not the story of a young woman who has simply had behavioural problems being locked away in an evil, evil, insane asylum. It would appear she has indeed been hallucinating more than one thing so far. And now we're making our way through the darkness back to the facility to what I would believe is going to be the conclusion of this game. And hopefully we will finally figure out what exactly happens to her, how she got out of this facility, or if she even did. Ah, I wonder if by any chance this is what that room I haven't used for anything yet is actually for. By odd coincidence. Maybe that could be the case. That could be what that room is actually for, given it's actually lit up by a lamp downstairs now. Oh, wait, hang on. These gates are locked. I can only go this way. Uh, okay, so... By the way, I'm keeping my eye very firmly on that bloody doll's face, because I'm convinced that's going to do something creepy yet, like its eyes are going to turn towards me or something. Oh, oh, play together's in the playground! Ah. And the swings. Don't forget the swings. Let's put her in a swing. Uh, we put her in a swing, or do we swing on the swings ourselves? Right, that's the swings, and then there's also a merry-go-round. Isn't there? Yeah, there was. Oh, the seesaw. Seesaws are kind of useless on their own, to be honest. Ah, I can use the analog stick to play on the seesaw if I want. Fine. And then just waiting for the jump scare. I'd like to lose my voice. I'd like to lose my eyes. I'd like to lose my hearing. I'd like to lose myself. Forever. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm holding some scissors and I don't like that one little bit. Oh, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't, the doll not you, the doll not you. Yes. Stabbing the doll in the womb with the scissors. Possibly an echo back to what was done to her upstairs in the gynecology lab. primary school. This would be further back in time then, because I was 16 or so when I was brought into the facility. So beginning primary school, I must. this must be a younger me. But maybe this is the source of why, because the, the problem was I was disruptive, I spoke back to people, and I was scared children were trying to kill me, but why? Why would I feel that way? Ah! Good old, good old photos of the leader. Good old leader. And on we go for a primary school that looks suspiciously like an insane asylum. And everything is starting to blind me. Blinding light. Town of light, I, I'm guessing. Okay. What are we doing? Why are we at a primary school? Why have we gone this early? Oh. There's rubbish on the ground. This is, yeah. This is not a primary school. This is an asylum. This is the ruined asylum just like before. But I'm guessing I may have just stumbled my way in a slight haze into possibly one of the other buildings. The f the, the ferry bit. Oh, oh, f okay, that creeped me out a bit. And now there's arms of light. I'm guessing I'm in one of the other buildings, the ferry building or the or the pavilion that I never actually went in before. Now, one of 17. Okay, so are we going around trying to get the, the full story? Something happened to her schoolmates did something to her that started her down the path. Renee's kind to Don Gino. 
but he always frightens me. Okay, a priest that she didn't like very much. Alright. Ah, we're just exploring this facility, trying to find all the drawings. I do a lot of bad things. I never tell anyone, but Mom knows it just the same. A weird bug alien thing. Okay, and then that, that's back where we were, right? We learn so many things at school, and so we've got to go. How would we get on otherwise? Presumably what her mother told her about school, about why it was, like, really important or something. Right, let's... So we've been up and around... Okay, so we went up this way, I think, and that led us down over here. So now let's go, I'm assuming, around and probably come out there. We're just finding all of these things we want to do and trying to piece together what happened in the past in her life. Oh, unless we're going to loop round to uh, the downward stairway the other side. We just need to find all the different pieces. Figure out what went wrong that originally got her sent to that asylum. I mean, I thought we knew. It's that she went off with a boy who gave her cigarettes and then raped her, or, well, that's her version of events anyway, and then, of course, because she'd accepted cigarettes, it was deemed to be prostitution and scandal. And now everything's dark and horrifying. Okay, good. There's no one here, yet these noises... God, my head is killing me. I can't keep my eyes open. We're back at the beginning. But this time, we're not back at the start outside the facility. We're being escorted by a couple of sisters, nurses, nuns or something. So there were more drawings there that we didn't get to see. There were 17, but we didn't get to see all of them because we were presumably on a timer. If you want to see all of them and understand what actually happened to Renee properly, you'll need to, I guess, play the game more than once. And now I'm remembering a part of my life where I was just strapped to a table and I have no control over what's going on at all. And I've woken up somewhere in a cell. Uh, and where am I? I can't tell from the foliage outside, but there's something on the bed. Just anything I can interact with, just that one letter. My medical file again. I don't want to know. I don't want to know anymore. No, we have to know. There's only confusion. We have to and know. There some who had scarcely seen me and thought they knew me and understood what was happening to me and could decide about my life. Now, it would appear she really doesn't want to know. The medical file I, I physically cannot interact with. Okay. Now, where am I? Am I back in the, the first building or am I now in... Ooh. This doesn't look right. No. This looks different. I'm in the second facility. I'm in um, in Ferry. I'm in Ferry. Which does appear to have been in much worse shape. Partially demolished, perhaps, or started falling apart on its own. And of course, while I've learnt an awful lot so far about who I was and how I acted while I was here and why I was sent here in the first place, I still don't know how or if I escaped and who I'm actually playing as, though I obviously would still assume it's going to be Renee herself. But a big film reel over here might give us some answers. What have you got to show us? Bobbin is missing. Don't know what one of those is, but I'm guessing it's this thing. In here, nobody laughs. I mean, really laughs. Not those crazy fools who laugh because people say they are mad. I don't know why, because they do really laugh. They say that I'm mad too, but I never feel like laughing. In the past, people laughed at me, but they were right, you know? You can't always cry, and people laugh when they are afraid, don't they? It happened to you, not to me, better so. In short, they do that, to show that they're happy. You oughtn't to be offended, because it's true, and deep down it's just like having pity, so to speak. But then you think about yourself, and so you laugh to say that it's okay. Everything will get better, that it's all shit. It's all shit, this place. You're not trying to tell me that it's not true, right? An intelligent person, educated, not like me. And if I can see that it's a load of shit, just imagine how much better you understand. 
No, come on. No, no, no. I feel fine here, you know? After all, I can do anything I want or say anything I want. No, come on. No, no, no. I feel fine here, you know? After all, I can do anything I want or say anything I want. Okay, and as far as I can tell, I can't do anything with this, uh... With this here other one. Ah, okay, finally. So that one's now like, that's actually stopped. Can I take this one off or put this one on at that point? No, that's just stuck on. Ah, Renee T. Renee T. And that's also Renee T. Can I take this off and listen to the other ones? This is the tapes of me where I sound quite lucid in 1940s, let's say 1943. If so, it sounds like I, yeah, got quite lucid and with it by the end. Okay. But as far as I can tell, I, I can't interact with either of those, so... Okay, fine. Ah, projection this time. That would be me, I'm guessing. It looks like it's just me sitting there looking fairly... calm and with it. Okay. The director's desk we found. Ah! This other building, I guess, may have been the administrative building in that case. Okay, and what have we got on the desk? 28th August, 1942. We hereby communicate the death of Ada T, mother of Renee T, our patient in your institution. No known relative. Sincerely yours, Onofrio P. Onofredo, the guy who came to visit me. I have nobody left in the world. Nobody at all. Solitude is very strange. It muffles everything, slows it down. It's an endless scream which doesn't emit any sound. A silent shout. I can't stop looking at myself. I will never leave this place. There's nobody for me out there. These walls have become my skin, and the wretched desperation within them is my soul without a voice. Here, nobody weeps anymore. How I would love to feel life, desperation, anger. I've stopped dreaming, daydreaming, maybe even thinking. I've lived in a reality which has corroded me, depriving me of everything, even of my capacity to feel pain. And so it would seem, ah, oh, it's... The truth is so much worse than just some horrendous silly conspiracy that, you know, rather than it just being they secretly made sure that my mother couldn't come and pick me up and then faked my death and performed medical experiments on me, they stopped delivering my mail because it made me angry and violent. My mother never picked me up because she was dead. It's just, ooh, and there's a nice stampy thing here, lovely. Always enjoy a good stampy thing. Uh, yes. Uh, sadly, the uh, the truth is much, much worse than any conspiracy theory. And it's looking increasingly clear like I am indeed playing as Renee. And if I am, what the hell does Renee do with herself now? It feels like, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing out there for her. So what does she do? Well, the elevator's not working, so... Can I use this ladder? Do I want to be getting up top? Is that what I want? Ah! Hang on. I won't be able to crack up. Oh, no! I can't hop up extremely small things, apparently. Oh, actually, is this the, that's not even that useful? Oh, the stairs! Okay, good. I found some stairs. Lovely. Found some stairs down to the uh, downstairs of the same building. And interestingly, I seem to have lost my torch. I can't find any torch anymore, so... Nothing much here by the looks of it, aside from just a walk straight out. And a whole bunch of bicycles and... You've been placed in a very curious position to draw attention to yourself. What are you after? So this is what the... The front or the rear of the second building? Does this lead back out onto the road? Okay, whatever's here. Can't interact with that. 5th May, 1943. Renee's in a good state of health. She eats and speaks. Is orientated in space and time. Therapy suspended. 3rd December. She asks reasonably if she can leave the hospital. Evaluate patient for six months. 2nd May, 1944. Discharge denied, despite favorable psychiatric opinion. Patient has no home or means of support. 4th May. The reasons why discharge is impossible are explained, and in this manner Renee learns of her mother's death, two years after the fact. 5th May. During the night she tried to kill herself by hanging herself with a sheet. 
saved by the nurses. Restrained to her bed, she once more tries to kill herself by suffocation. It is decided to perform a transorbital lobotomy. Oh, that's horrible. She actually recovered. She was actually well. She got better. And then oh, she learnt her mother had died years before and she just completely relapsed oh that's horrible and right here a sharp stick and a hammer because that's all you need to perform brain surgery oh don't make me live through that that's horrible the old lobotomies in mental illness were the worst thing the use of lobotomy spread rapidly in Italy compared to other European countries in America. The original technique pioneered by A. E. Morris was perfect perfected in nineteen thirty seven by A. Fiamberti, who could see the first form of trans oh the operation involved gaining access to the front Oh that's horrible. Oh that makes me Ah oh. oh Oh God I, I, I'm sorry, I can't even read that. That's horrendous. Oh, and there I am. From the perspective of the doctor. Ah, knocked. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, God, no, 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 no. Oh, God. That is the worst. Ah. Yeah, sorry, I just cut some of that off, and you're all very lucky I did, because that was... 10th of June, 1944. Uh. Operation successful. Patient tranquil and collaborative. Motor coordination capacity reduced, but she's improving. Transfer to the tranquil department in the care of Dr. B. 25th of October. Continues to talk about Amara and her doll, Charlotte. The disturbances of motor capacity show slight signs of improvement. Difficulty walking, not capable of riding, and the nurses report that they have to help her dress, wash, and feed herself. In the summer of 1944, Renee was transferred back into my department. Aware of little, indifferent, hardly ever spoke. One day, she said, when I find the courage to look at myself in the mirror, I see a young face which is aged and looks at me full of fear. She is a woman now who has changed profoundly compared to the girl that I had under my care several years ago. Only the sadness of her gaze and her intelligence are unchanged. She's so young, just 23 years old, but is lacking all vitality. Perhaps her condition may improve, but probably not. Her life has been thrown away. And nobody did a thing to try to avoid this. If you want horror, something truly catastrophically, appallingly horrendous. You don't ever want to default to a creepy mascot stalking a pizza place at night, or a psychic girl with impossible powers, or a Japanese girl who drowns in a well who now crawls out of a TV. Some of the worst horrors, worse than anything that you could possibly imagine, is what people did to other people when behaviour problems were redefined as mental illness and mental illness was treated by people who have no idea how the brain or the mind worked. <laughs> that is truly horrifying. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is indeed the Town of Light. An immensely worthy game and games games can be good for all sorts of different reasons some games are good for their narrative and some games are good for their gameplay and some games are good for their atmosphere and sometimes like this one games can be good because they are worthy and they have spotted something that deserves to be shared as horrifying as it might be something that deserves to be more widely known about than it is 
and realised that there is something truly horrifying. And that has creeped me out worse than anything in Soma. That has, that has made me feel horrendous worse than anything in Soma or any other psychological horror game I, I've ever played. That was truly horrible. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, The Town of Light, a game that took a very, very good idea, a very horrifying concept, and explored it in a brutally frank and horrifying way. And what more can you ask for a horror game? What more can you ask for a psychological horror game? I, well, I can't say I enjoyed that. I didn't enjoy that. I feel slightly physically uncomfortable and unwell at the moment from having to watch the... Yes, the, the representation of the lobotomy that I cut out at the end there. It was horrendous. <laughs> Truly horrendous. And it feels like there's, yeah, there's a little bit more to this. Obviously, like, it feels like if you were to play this game over and over, you could see more of the drawings in the nightmare world there before we got to the very end game. Because there's clearly more to Renee's backstory than what we got there. But Town of Light, immensely worthy, deeply uncomfortable and everything that a psychological horror game should be. Absolutely not just a walking simulator, a game with a horrifying, horrifying story. And I hope you haven't enjoyed it, really, because you really shouldn't have enjoyed that. You, you should feel as uncomfortable and horrified as I do. But yes, Town of Light, that's that. <laughs> I'm going to go have a nice cup of tea now. I'm going to have the rest of the day off. I feel deeply, deeply sad about everything but yes do always let me know if you see a new little psychologically horror game coming out soon or that's just come out and i always will give them a little bit of a look to see if i think they'd make good videos but in the meantime ladies and gentlemen i've been john this has been many a true nerd and this is the immensely worthy the town of light thank you very much and goodbye here have a hat Oh, you don't have a head. I'm sorry. That was really insensitive of me. Oh, I don't want to interface with whatever this is, but all right. Oh, God, he's running Windows 8. No bloody wonder it's all gone tits up. Fire extinguisher, if it's a choice between you and me, I'm afraid I'm sacrificing you just FYI.